So I got two examples. This is a nice one. Okay, this is a nice one. So before anything, what I want you to do here, remember our job here is to do what? Develop intuition. Okay? Here's where you're going to develop it. I want you to look at this circuit, and I want you to start making mistakes. Ask yourself, is it discharging or is it charging? Once you got that in your head, that means you got to do some mental calculations in here. After that, then we'll calculate it. And when we calculate it, we'll ask the question, was our intuition good or not? And if it wasn't, that's okay, right? Because our job is for you to make as many mistakes very early on so that you learn from those mistakes. Tell me. Figure it out. And then once you do that, go through the process. Okay, DC of zero minus. Okay, the feminine parameters after the switch is thrown. Okay, let's do this. Getting okay. We want to move efficiently through this guy. Right? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it says the Describe the behavior of the caps. Right? We want the initial and final steady state. Is it charging or discharging? So let's do this. So when I look at this guy, this guy's open. If it's open, at the initial steady state, this goes to an open. So what that means? It kills that resistor, that resistor. So the initial state should be 3 volts. Okay? Now the question is, I'm going to see the full voltage at this point. If I close this, it has to be discharging. It has to be discharging because now I'm seeing only the voltage across this 6 ohm resistor. Right? That's, so I'm only seeing part of that. So what I should be seeing here is I should be seeing something discharging. Right? It should be discharging. And, and from just our head calculations, it should be going from 3 volts to what? The full source. And now I'm going to go to something less. So now I'm going to go to a lower value. So my point here is that when you're looking at this thing here, you don't need to know the number unless the number pops out at you. What you need to know is that this is what's going to be happening. So if you get a calculation and it's going the other way, guess what? You have a mistake. Go back and correct it. Okay? I've seen people write this and then they'll go and they'll set up a charging one and you'll see with the big red line, they go like, dude, did you not see this? Didn't you write that? Learn from what you're doing, right? Pay attention to those details. So here we go. Step one. We need to determine VC of zero minus, right? That's the initial value. So the switch is open. Now, once again, there's those seven of you that decided not to draw an extra circuit on the exam for the Thevenin. And what happened? You made my life real easy. You're not going to get a circuit this nice. So right now, this one's pretty short. How long did it take me to draw that? Seconds? God damn it, take the damn time and do it. Right? It's not going to It's not gonna hurt you that much. So this guy has to be 3 volts. Right? So I know VOC. And then, I'm going to go to step 2 now. So step two then, as I said, determine <coughs> the feminine parameters. And there's three of them. Right? I want to get VOC, I want to get RTH, and I want to get one over tau. Not tau, but one over tau, so that I can put it into my equation. So here I go. So now I'm going to get VOC here. So VOC tells me that I do what? Switch is closed, and then I remove the capacitor from the circuit. So then I get 3 volts. I have a 3 ohm. I have a 6 ohm. So I have a 6 
ohm, I have a 3 ohm, and this guy, because this is an open here, we know that that resistor is dead, right? It's gone. So I could see here that VOC must be the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor. So this tells me here that VOC is the same as the voltage across the 6 ohm resistor, since I only have one loop in the circuit, I'm going to use VDR, which then tells me that it's got to be 6, 3 plus 6 times 3, so I get 3 over 9, which is 3, so that gives me 2 volts. Does that make sense? Yes. We knew that it started at 3 volts, and we knew it had to go to a lower value, so I got 2 volts, so that, that should be making you happy right there. So then I'm going to go RTH. So when I look at RTH, what do I do? I short out the voltage source. And I now include that dead resistor here. So I have 6, 3, 6. Where am I getting RTH? I'm getting it this way, right here. So when I look at RTH, what do I have? Well, if I come in this way, you can see right here that I'm going to get a split. So this should be what? 6 plus 3 parallel to 6. So if I divide this guy, I'm going to get 2. So then in the end, I'm going to get 8 ohms for RTH. Now that I got RTH, I'm going to go calculate the time constant. So now I got 1 over tau. So now if I look at 1 over tau, that's the same as 1 over RTH times C. So this tells me here that I'm going to get 8 times the cap value. Okay, And this is going to be, what, 0 0.05. And if I calculate this number, I end up getting... Um, 2.5 hertz for 1 over tau. So now that I have that, I can put it into solution form. Okay, so now I'm going to go to step 3, and then I'm going to put into solution form, and if I put it into solution form here, that means I'm going to write Vc of t equals VOC plus the quantity VC0 minus VOC e to the minus t over tau. So now I'm going to take these values and I'm going to plug them right into there. So what's VOC? 2. And then I'm going to look at this quantity here, which has to be VC0 minus, which has to be 3 minus 2 times e to the minus 2.5 t. And you can see the advantage of having 1 over tau. I'm just taking that number and I'm plugging it right into here. So when I look at this solution, Vc of t is equal to, am I getting too low? Okay. Then I'm going to get what? 2 plus 1 e to the minus 2.5 t. That is my solution. Okay, that is my solution. Does that solution make sense? Let's look at this. let's look at these numbers. What does that number tell me here? So let's plot and interpret. So if I plot and interpret here, I go like this. I know that my VC of t before zero, what's it doing? It's coming in at what? 3. <coughs> right? So it's coming in at 3 volts. And then, look at that 1. What does that 1 tell me? Because it's positive, there's a discharge. So then, this guy is discharging to what? 2 volts. How big of a jump is it from its initial value? I can see that this jump from here to here is my delta V is equal to 1 volt here. 
I had a jump from 3 to 2. So far, so good here. But I just decided to add this thing, because we should do that last step here. The thing that we should look at here is that you got to remember that you've got to go back and solve the circuit problem. So let's do that. So what do I do? I don't deal with my Thevenin circuit. What do I deal with? That circuit. So now, this added step I'm going to say here is I'm going to say this is step four. You've got to solve the circuit problem. And in this case, remember, I'm just adding this right now. I'm going to say, solve the circuit problem for I6 of T. How do I get that? I go back to my original circuit. So this is 6, this is 6, this is 3, and then this is my cat value. What I want to do here is that I want to get this current, I6. There's a lot of ways that one can look at this thing, but what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to draw in my nodes right now, just to make sure that we're speaking the same language. What I think is the easiest way to look at is note that the 6 and VC is parallel to that guy. So if I set my node here, and then I set my ground right here, the only reason why I'm doing that, it means that this branch must be parallel to that branch. How am I doing over here? Is it too small? Are we getting too small? I'm going to move it all the way over there. Okay. So what you're seeing here is that these voltages have to equal to that voltage right there. So if I use this guy here, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to notice that my 6 is parallel to this 6 and this cap right there. So what am I going to do? Well, if I want this current right here, I know that this current must be what? This node relative to this ground here. So then that means that the current I6 must be the voltage across 6 divided by 6 ohms. Okay? So where so we got to be careful here. Look at the voltage, this guy here. So the voltage drop across this guy, because the cap and the 6 ohm are in series, I'm going to write it as 6 IC. So what do I do? I do this here. Then V6 has to be 6 IC plus DC. So if I do that, it's got to be 6 times the quantity of what? I take the derivative of that guy. So if I take the derivative of this guy, I have a constant. And then I take the derivative of that exponential here. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is that you've got to remember that IC is C dV dt. So the constant, the capacitance is 0 0.05 times the derivative of 2 plus e to the minus 2.5t, right? Plus vc, which will be 2 plus e to the minus 2.5t, right? Oops, I think I have an extra break. So then I just clean this up now. So then this here is going to be 6 times 0 0.05. That's 0, so then I'm going to get minus 2.5 e to the minus 2.5t plus 2 plus e to the minus 2.5t here. Now note, there's a mess here. But go back and look at this circuit here. Now. When I look at the circuit here, 
If I did this right, what is this voltage across this guy right here? At zero minus. Zero, right? There's no current flowing through. So if I look at this guy, what am I seeing? I'm seeing that if I look at the voltage across this guy, what we're seeing here is that this guy is coming in and it's zero. Right? So V6 at zero minus equal to zero. This is a non zero value here. Right? So what you're seeing here is that suddenly the switch is thrown. And as it's thrown, I'm going to get a discontinuity. How big is my discontinuity? Well, when I look at this equation here, it has to go up to 2 volts, no matter what. Right? It has to go up to 2 volts. And we saw that over there because they become parallel at that point. But what you're seeing here is that at t equal to 0, I'm going to get what? That's 1. That's 1. So I'm going to get, this guy's going to be, I'm going to get V6 at 0 plus, look at that, 0 plus, not 0 minus. 0 minus is 0, has to be what? That's 1, so I'm going to get 2.5 times 6 times 0 0.05 plus 2 plus 1. Can somebody calculate this number? Let's, let's see what this value is. If I had been... I, you know, thinking earlier, I would have done this before we walked into the What is it? You get 2.7. So look what happens now. The resistor voltage, did you say 2.7? No, I'm 2.25 actually. 2.25. Yeah, I'm So this means here that this guy does what? It jumps up to what? 2.25. Volt. There's this instantaneous jump. And then what does it do? It now decays to what? To 2 volts. So then, this guy now decays down where it has its final steady state value of 2 volts at V6 equal infinity. There's discontinuities. Capacitors can't change, but anything related to the current will change instantaneously, and it has an instantaneous effect on that guy. Okay? That's what I mean, solving the circuit problem. This shit is deep, right? There's a lot of steps here. But we should have more fun, <laughs> right? That's what you guys are paying me for, is fun. The 